train force. This is your boy, Ray Shemarine, from the train radio show. You also going to become a co host on the outside, Chardonnay. She's tuning in the inferno. Right about now, we have a special guest. Good afternoon, Aiden. How are you doing? Good afternoon. I'm good. You? I'm fine, Randall. Bless, please. <laughs> it's good to be in the presence of you right now, actually. On this Friday, because I don't normally work on Friday, but it's good to be here, yes. I'm usually at work on Friday. Yeah, you know, I should. But <laughs> it's good to be here, though, I must say that. Now, Aiden, while oh, you're arriving at that name first and foremost, because when people hear that name, Aiden, this is a boy name. But well, I have a beautiful goddess in front of me. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Aiden came about because my name is Nadia, oh. and Nadia spelled backward is Aiden, N A D I A A I D A N. Interesting. Now, and then you start, you become interested in the arts at a very young age. Did you get support from your parents at that age? Yeah, I was always supported by my family, my mom, my grand, my aunt, especially. Mm-hmm. Like, they would always be like, go after what you want. You know, they love the arts as well. So, yeah. Do you care to tell the people what age you fall in love with the, with the music, with the arts <laughs> in general? <laughs> well, I fell in love with dancing from the age of six. And then from there, I fell in love with singing. Well, really, it was rapping initially. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's my thing there, no? Yes. So I initially started rapping. You can freestyle, babe. Pardon? You can freestyle. If I could freestyle, I wouldn't say that I'm the best person at freestyling, but I could drop something if you wanted. Oh, but later in the interview, we can get to that. <laughs> don't worry, don't rush the brush. So tell us about your experience in the different areas like dancing, modeling, all these different things you were jelling. Okay, um, in terms of like modeling, I started modeling from age maybe 14. Mm. Yeah, um, I was after winning a pageant at Lodge in 2007. Congrats, congrats. Thank you. I ended up going into modeling with Oral Welchman. Yeah, at New Horizon. And then from there, I did stuff with Stephanie Chase at SFC. From there, I did some stuff with Posh and Kingsley Thorne. Yeah, because Posh Entertainment came down here and they were looking for some models. And I was one of the youngest that were selected, yeah. No, you know you just called some big names there. <laughs> you called Stephanie Chase. You called Kingsley Thorne, who passed away. Yeah. So may rest, rest in peace. And to be able to even work with Kingsley, you know Kingsley was in terms yes, of... Yes, I know. Very kind of... <laughs> When I was 13, he told me, you don't know who I am, but I know you. Jesus. You're a star. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, thank you. Well, yeah, like, you are a star. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. I must say that you are a thank star. Thank you. You're shining right now, girl. You have to bigger yourself on that. Now, how was it like performing at the Barbados Music Awards and also Carrie Festa? Because you know Carrie Festa is uh, a big thing. Yeah, well, I didn't perform at Carafesta in Barbados. Just to clarify that, I performed at Carafesta in Haiti. Wow. Yeah. So that was actually really interesting for me. But I did dancing behind Biggie Irie, and I also did a play. Yeah, because I act as well. So. Which movies you got in there? <laughs> you your business now, you know? Well, I've acted in this Canadian film. Mm-hmm. It's a Canadian film called When the World Ends. Mm. Yeah. So you act, you you do work for Biggie, so that's a big achievement. Well, I don't I don't work for Biggie. I mean, we, it, uh, we all did um, dancing for mm-hmm. the, like persons who were performing at Carafesta, and Biggie was one performing. He who traveled to Haiti with us, so I danced behind him and I also acted. So you enjoy your stay well in Haiti at that point of time? Yeah, actually it was really fun. Like being out there is not what people see on CNN. Trust me, it's really beautiful. The people are very lovely. It's, it's far from what it seems. Yeah, because if I mean people show things on TV, they always try to show that bad part of the, the, the country. And I'm not, not saying there. it's not there. The poverty and stuff is there, but there's a lot more to the country. It's Every very, country. very beautiful. Every country has poverty. It's just a how it looks. Now, now, tell me, how you, in terms of your many activities, how do you get time to devote yourself to everything? Because you're a fashion designer, you're a stylist, you... you <laughs> Do you get rest? I do, I do. I sing, I dance, I act, I model, I do some of everything. And I also have two, three jobs. So, like, basically... You have a little again? Two, three jobs. Like, it's like, I just, you know, dedicate myself to, like, time management. Try to spend some time doing this, time doing that. Writing, singing, acting, learning lines, going to work. <laughs> You, yeah. know, you know which artist you remind me of? Which big artist? Who's that? Rihanna and Beyonce. Rihanna and Beyonce? 
Oh, that's good. I'm actually flattered. <laughs> I'm serious because all those things you have to be very disciplined, very to be able to do all them things. And in terms of the designing, tell me the aspect how you got into the, the designing clothes. And well, designing stuff was more so something that I did when I was in secondary school, mm-hmm. like doing stuff with like pageants mm-hmm. and stuff. Like people would come to me to like mentor them through their like pageant stuff or like modeling stuff. Mm-hmm. And I guess it was more so to just like hone their personality in their clothing so I would try to bring that out the individual rather than you just putting on clothes and saying oh I could rock this because one person could rock something and the next person would pull it off better why because there is their personality so that's what I got into in terms of like that aspect of the art that means you could do a nice soup for me you know but it got, <laughs> it got really crazy because they crazy this is first school but anyhow so you're a singer and songwriter. Tell me at what age you became writing your songs. Um, maybe about 16, 17. I would say I really came into like writing because I always doubted myself with regards to writing. Yeah, I wasn't. I would write something and then I might just get stuck. I might get writer's block. I may love it now and then not love it tomorrow. So. For me, writing was always difficult, and I think that I'm only really now, I should say, coming into writing, and that's with the help of Taff Hinkson. Got a shout out to Taff. Big yeah. shout out indeed. <laughs> See, you're working with the good people. You're working with Taff, and you know he he got his thing going on. Yeah, about. actually, it's funny. Like I've known Taff for years. I've known of Taff for years, and like. I've always I've always loved his music and yeah. this one time he asked me to do a hook on his song <laughs> vibe like you, right? I saw it, yes, yes. Right, yes. so <laughs> So he asked me to do the hook on it and I was like, Me? Like me? And he was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard you're a vocalist so you know? And after that Taff has been team Aiden ever since and he actually wrote I'm working on my EP. Let me just say that sure. first. So <laughs> listen, make sure we the first radio station to have that. To have my EP. <laughs> to have it right here. It is EP right here. No problem. But yeah, Taff has been a really big inspiration and influence to me really getting my music out this year. I have to say that. So shout out to Taff for sure. Big shout out to him. Now you have a song called If It Ain't Got Love Tonight. Well, the, technically, it's not my song. It was the song I did at a writing camp with some producers and stuff mm. like um, Sat Passe, um, Corey, who did Cheers to the Weekend for Rihanna. So, yeah, it was it was a really good writing camp hosted by some people from Def Jam and also Ivan Barry. So, yeah, that one was interesting, but it's not my song. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I, I just gonna recorded say this it. To you know, right? I'm seeing that in your future. You may get picked up by a record label uh-huh. <laughs> because I'm gonna be real. When I went to One Love concert, for those who don't know, she sang a song called "Life Nice." When I saw you came on stage, it was like shh, a movie. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I actually I, wanted to faint in that performance. What? Yeah, I wanted to faint Why? because because I was really nervous. I was extremely nervous, like being able to perform on a stage Marshall is gonna perform on, I was extremely nervous. I came off the stage shaking. I remember um, Salt was recording it for me. Yeah, I saw your video. And, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I could faint now. <laughs> like at the end of the video, and I never realized that at the end of the video, I said that. <laughs> but to be honest, to come and perform on Marshall stage is a big thing, you know? Yeah, and I was a first year soca artist last year, and I got to perform at Your One Love. First so. year, wow. Yeah. First year, and to get to perform Marshall. <laughs> Listen, your voice would take you places. Thank you very much. To be able to even go on a Marshall stage, especially first year, Marshall sees something in you, his people and everything see something in you. <laughs> You think I'm joking, but I'm serious. You're gonna I got a bigger J Ventures for that. She worked really hard to get me on there. Shh. Got a bigger up. You doing? Yeah, I'm very, I'm very surprised. Tell us about your experience in the different. Oh no, the wrong page. Let me turn the page. How, how did you feel when you won the competition for the Pints Calendar Girl? <laughs> oh well, first of all, that was a rush. Like, honestly being in the competition the competition was different from the years before mm-hmm. where there was like it was all online entity not 
instead of like being like the stage modeling stuff mm-hmm. like that we actually did everything online and i was actually really nervous with regards to winning because this other girl who was doing very well akila you know bigger up you know mm-hmm. she did very well um i was nervous i thought that she was gonna win to be honest it was like a in and out in and out so when i was going to work the day they said they were gonna announce it they closed off voting and i was actually in the lead i was in the lead with like twenty one thousand or something like that and i was so nervous i was like oh my god are they gonna say that i won or is akila gonna win i don't know and i was on my way to work in the van and they messaged me because they couldn't get through to me calling and they said you won and i was like really i sat down <laughs> and i was like oh my god you fainted i didn't faint oh, this time god. i didn't faint this time <laughs> okay how to ask <laughs> but it was a really good experience and then having the year being the ambassador mm. yeah it was amazing how have, how have that changed your like the opportunities that open up since that since that happened well um to say the opportunities mm-hmm. that have opened up i would say that a lot of people recognize like oh she's not just a, a model she's not just a pretty face she can actually speak she carries herself well you know she doesn't have herself too much in the public i got a lot of good reviews like from banks and people who will come to banks and stuff and say how i handled myself at the like shop lines and stuff so it was really interesting and I enjoyed it. I can't say that anything bad came from it. And plus, I did Life Nice and people started to recognize me more as an artist. And it was my way of putting myself out there. And they actually, they, they pushed it as well. That's, so. that's how I got to know you, know you. Because after you did Life, um, Life Nice and you won that, that's how I got to know you actually. Oh. And then ever <laughs> since, they have been lurking on your um, <clears throat> Instagram. So thank God. He says lurking. Yes, and searching. Thank, thank God for social media. Yes, thank God. <laughs> I, so you did that just to propel your music too. Yeah, I did because I had stopped doing music for like two years or so. I was focusing on acting and dancing because I was going to BCC at the time doing theater arts. So I was more so looking into acting and pushing that, honing that craft and I felt like maybe I was neglecting my artistry of being an artist singing. So I said 2017, I'm not, I'm not going to let it slide, I'm going to put it forward. It's true, it's true. Now let me answer this question. Okay. Which, which is your favorite artist? Who's your favorite artist right now in your playlist? Like getting in your business to spot him? Ooh. Well... <laughs> I don't I can't really say that I do have a favorite favorite artist I mean I love Beyonce and Ooh. Beyonce will always be number one for me personally but um, my playlist is full of like old music like the Aaliyahs and TLC and you know <laughs> the Lauren Hills so oh, I'm, yeah. I'm an old girl <laughs> but it's an artist I see you covered on YouTube. What's, what's oh, you mean the Scissor? Yes. Yeah, yes, I really is a Scissor I, fan. I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Scissor fan. I won't lie. I definitely have to say I'm a big Scissor fan. <laughs> He's so looking that, at me like. Mm. So that means if Scissor comes on by business and hear your music, and say I want to work with you. I would be like, yes, today let's go. Like to now, to now, let's let's so you go. Won't, you won't faint first and then go. No, I won't faint. I will faint after the fact. <laughs> But I will be ready. I will definitely be ready. I have to say, like, Scissor, yeah. Right now, Scissor has to be up there for sure. Scissor and Janae I cool, maybe. <laughs> no, I gotta jump back a little bit. So when you went the Banks Canada Girl, yeah. and you went on to the different bars, and you saw your poster, your family saw, especially <laughs> your mom and your dad saw your poster, what was the reaction like? Well, everybody was like, you know, like, yes, girl, get it, you know, congrats, I'm so proud of you, look at you, you know, you know, I saw you, that this is my friend, girlfriend, yes, I know her, so it, it was, it was fine, my granny, granny was so proud of me, my mom was proud of me, so I don't think that anyone really said anything negative in terms of my family, my family is a really big supporter of me going after my dreams, which is, you know, being an artist and doing things that are not, really textbook like being behind a desk in an office job kind of thing like they're all about me going after my dream and doing what I love so it's true they see you seem comfortable when you're modeling your pictures <laughs> you seem that like you're comfortable in your skin and not worry about 
yeah, yeah because I, I just do me like I'm not worried about what other people are gonna think at the end of the day everyone's gonna have an opinion and that's okay mm-hmm. I, I'm I condone everybody having an opinion because then that means you're an individual you know what you want you know what you stand for it and that's okay it's true I feel honored to be in the presence of you because when I got the <laughs> call today, well, a couple of days ago, I have to interview you. I was like, Me? You done? What does the dream come true? Because <laughs> I've been watching this girl for fun, like, liter- see? Lurking. <laughs> yes, yes. You can look my business for her. You said it. Yes, you said yes, it. it's true, it's true. Now, the song, Headphones. Ooh. That song is popping. Thank you so much. That song, you gonna have to have it on replay and replay all the time in your car, blasting it. I am being real. Someone told me it's too short. We want more. <laughs> I agree. It's too short. I want more too. And the visual. Oh. Who produced the track? Well, the producer was uh, Mohammed mm. Hanif Mohammed. Um, he did the beat for headphones, mm-hmm. and then I recorded it at um, Simon Pipe. Yeah. Big up, same up, same up, one bigger itself, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I recorded it at Simon and then Yuri, Yuri Kaler, a guy from Canada, he mixed and mastered it and he also added the bass on it. So, yeah, so also Tef had a hand in this too. Oh, yeah, Tef um, arranged the beat as it was and he also wrote the majority of headphones. But you know, you came up with a very clever name because music people go and listen to. <laughs> People gonna listen to music by headphones right now. We wear headphones. You, you and I have one headphones, <laughs> and it was so clever to even name the song headphones. And the the the, the well, these music van and the whole is very steamy, kind of sexual. Tell me the words, some of the words that when you sit down and wrote this song, what went through your head? Like, let me write this and hold the visual gonna go because. Well, I didn't really think of like the visual initially because when I wrote it, I wasn't thinking about doing a music video. I was thinking about doing the EP in general. So I was thinking of just putting out the EP with like maybe one or two visuals, but I never like sat down and thought, oh, which song will I use to do visuals for? But because um, with regards to like the finances and stuff and like getting the EP done completely, mm-hmm. I had to set back and I actually wanted to do it for the last year. But when I realized how much it took, to like really produce the EP and of a certain quality mm-hmm. and have the right team behind me and everything, I decided that I would push it off to this year. But January turned into February and I said, you know what, I just need to do it. I need to do one song. And I looked at the EP and I said, what song would really like, like gas enough attention? You know, and Headphones was that song for me. Headphones was that song because it gave enough, but it wasn't over like overly like too much. So. It was just right. It reminded me of the name page. Your artist will have a video called Body. A body. Ah, Shan, yeah. Yes. You, you're all, when, when they watch your video, that jumps in my head quickly. Oh, like, really? Shh. Yeah, honestly. Most people tell me that, you know, um, they remember either um, is Rihanna Kiss It Better or. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that too. That's right. They yeah. said that one, but yeah. I they said that the, the visuals kind of reminded them of that, like how it was kind of darkish and stuff. But I wasn't thinking of nobody's visuals when I did it. It was more so of a freestyle thing. Shout out to Danny because. Mm-hmm. We were here like, you know, stuck between a rock and a hard place and between the hard place was me having work the next morning and me leaving work that same evening. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, you know, I'm going to be running late, but, you know, we're going to do this. We got this. And so big up to Danny. We we had the same kind of idea of what we wanted mm-hmm. and we just said, we're going to freestyle this, but we're going to make it dope. We're going to make it mm-hmm. happen. So Definitely. I'm glad that everybody's responding well to it and everybody loves it because it took a lot. It took a lot out of me. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, God get a lot of work on the future because it, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. That's what I keep telling custom, people. Because you've got a lot of things on your <laughs> shoulders. You're accustomed. <laughs> I'm accustomed to juggling the things and getting it worked out by hook or crook. But if by any means necessary I need to get something done, it's going to be done. It may not be in the time frame I want it to be, but I'm going to make sure I always produce excellence. No, the next question I have for you. Where do you see yourself five to ten years? Five to ten years, I'm going to be the next mm. princess out of Barbados. Hey. 
Hey. Wrap in the two for a six. That's that's what I see. That's what that's what's gonna happen. In the name. I believe it. Yes, in the yes, name. In the name yes. <laughs> it will happen. I tell you you're gonna get a contract. Remember I said it here right first on exclusive on contract, exclusive that you <laughs> and you get a record deal and you can get to work with some big people in the industry. More big people in the industry. Trust me on that. Thank now, you. Can we buy the song on iTunes? Well, it's not on iTunes at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get it up on iTunes. Maybe by next week it should be up, but yes. not promising anything. Oh, but I'm, I'm really working on it. I beg for you know, I'm people. working on it, guys. <laughs> I beg for the people. But right now it's on SoundCloud and it is on Selector Charts. I want you to play some Selector Charts so far. Pardon? I want you to play some Selector Charts. Last time I checked, I think it was number four or five, something around there. I did, like the day I put it up, it was at three, then it was at four, then it was at three, then it was at five. I don't know, but it was like somewhere in there, and I was like, Correct, what? So. Well, we're going, we're going to aim to get that number one. We're aiming for number one. Of course. <laughs> hey, Sons, of course. No, any other artists that you would like to work with at this point in time? It could be local, international right now. Right now, um... Right, right now, I can't say that I want to work with any mm -hmm. artist per se. Like, I really want to like get my EPL, and once my EPL, then I could look at like working with other people. But I wouldn't mind definitely working with people like I would work with Taff again forever and ever and ever more. You know, like I really got a big up Taff because he is like the yeah. big brother sent from heaven. He's a genius. <laughs> He's a genius, like brilliant, brilliant mind. Um, I would work with Tat, um, Rico, Maserati, yeah. I, yeah, um, I can see that happening. You yeah. can see that happening. Of course. <laughs> Two wonderful workers, powerhouse, man. I, I, better yet, all three of y'all. Yeah, listen, that would be dope. Like, legit, that would be so great. Um, and somebody else that I, I would work with too would be Kristen, Chris Irie. Yeah, I would. If I have to say, like, from, like, the local people right now, if I had to pick out people, those would be my top three right now. Like, Mahalia holding it all on her own in a car, and like, with Tuma Hill, like, woo woo, you know, big up yourself. But, you know, if I had to work with, like, particular selective artists, those would be the artists I would work with. No, in your spare time, if you, well, you which you hardly do get, probably, what you do on your off days? Um, I watch TV with my niece. <laughs> I watch TV with my niece. I go to the movies. I like drag my friends like out at last minute. I be like, okay, you wanna go to the movies? I like when she drag the movie. <laughs> yeah, I do, be and and they will have plans to be like, you need to cancel them because I have today off or I'm off tonight. <laughs> and then they will decide to go. But you know, big up my friends, my real day ones, my real true friends who just be like, alright, I can drop my friends and come and hang with you. <laughs> But really and truly, I just lie down in my bed and binge watch, play with my niece, and go out with my friends to watch movies. And write songs. And, yeah, and write songs. <laughs> I mean, I try not to do that on my, like, real downtime. Like, if I'm talking about downtime, downtime, that's my downtime. But, like, when it's, like, a day off from work and I have stuff to do, usually it's finding funds, doing some kind of, like, photo shoot having a meeting mm -hmm. you know sitting down planning what's the next way to get something done it's always work there's always work to be done so it's and my mind is most creative at night so i hardly sleep. yes yes when everything yeah when sleep. everybody's asleep and no the house is like mm -hmm. you know you can hear a pin drop honestly like that's that's the time where i would like write or i would just listen to beats and come up with ideas or like think of like who I want to like emulate, like what I see this person doing, I try to plan for my future. Like, okay, if I was to become famous, like who would I work with? Uh, what label maybe I would want to like jump on? Like different things like that. Like I would sit down and think about, or I would go and watch music videos and like look at what people did. Mm -hmm. You know, just for inspiration and kind of see what's going on out there right now in the industry. Like yourself out there, man. You gotta see what's going on. No, I want you to be a favorite, though. Yeah. Since, since you're still doing modeling, <laughs> I think you should enter the face of Kate Chaperon. Ah. And Miss Wotong. Give yourself well, a little I more exposure, like, you know? I mean, I, I, I don't know. Um, I was a real pageant girl back in the day, back in like 2007, 2008. Man, that's not you old, eh? Yeah, I'm old. No, no. You're so young. I'm never telling y'all my age, but I'm old. She's still young. <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't know. I would think about it. People still do ask me to do um, pageants and stuff. Um, 
I was approached to do Miss with Miss World the yeah, last year. The mm-hmm. one that Shana Harris won. You know, big up Shana Harris, congrats. Um I yeah. I I didn't do it because I felt like, you know, it, Miss Banks already to have another title. Like I and I had a lot going on too and I was trying to get the E P done and trying to find fun, stuff like that. A lot of different things were happening at that time so I just felt like it wasn't. It wasn't time for that, and I always believe everything in its time and everything at the right time. Well, let the opportunity come back again. Yeah, then I'll, I'll probably take it. More than likely, I would. Take it. <laughs> Don't leave it drop. Take it up. Take it up. All right, I'll take it always. I am serious. You're gonna go far. No out. problem. In terms of how to book, you know, where can we? Okay, if and people management? are looking to book me, mm-hmm. um, the email address is official Ada Music. This is music with the C and not a Q, like on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. So that's official Ada Music at gmail.com. And if you're looking for me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, it's Ada Music, mm-hmm. Ada Nadia Backward, and music with the Q, M U S I Q, this time.